Hi, I'm Brian J. Hatcher. I'm a Marvel fan, and I hated the season finale of She-Hulk Attorney at Law. Well, we might as well get started on this massive can of worms I just opened. But for my part, I really did enjoy the show. It really appeared like it was going to be something different and not your typical Marvel fare. And it certainly looked like it was planning on taking enough chances that that was going to draw my interest. I do have to say, though, I wasn't the biggest fan of that Hulk blood subplot that it looked like they were going to introduce into the show. It's like every time they cut to something that was adding to that subplot, it felt to me like it was actually interrupting the show that I wanted to watch. But I figured, well, what the heck, well, let's just see where it goes. And I did like the show. I liked how the episodes were mostly self-contained, very much like your typical sitcom. I mean, except for the times when they had to break in to add another piece to this Hulk blood puzzle. But I did like what they were doing with the show. And then the finale. Now, I didn't hate the entire finale. That beginning that was a throwback to the old Hulk TV show, I thought was absolutely brilliant. And the stuff they did with the uh, Disney Plus menu, I thought was really great. And the backyard picnic that they had with Jen's family and Matt Murdock, that was really charming. And I really like that. But I have to admit, I wasn't all too happy when the final fight started to break out because, you know, I was really enjoying the new stuff they were doing with the show in a different direction. And then at that moment, it just seemed like they were doing the old standard Marvel cliche while simultaneously jumping the shark. But then Jennifer started to address the very thing that I was thinking. And so I thought, okay, well, maybe they're not actually going down that road. They're going to avert expectations in some way. And so I was curious to see exactly what they were going to do. But then we get to the end of the finale. And I hated it. I mean, I wasn't just disappointed with it. I was actually angry about it. At the time, I wasn't exactly sure what had caused such a visceral reaction in me, but I couldn't deny the fact that I absolutely hated this finale. Now, before I get started talking about the problems that I had with the finale, I do want to take a moment to make it very clear that I'm not trying to change anybody's minds about what they may have thought about the finale themselves. If you love the finale, then I completely respect that opinion. And I'm not saying that in, well, everybody has a right to their own opinion, he said sarcastically, rolling his eyes. I know you know this, but I want you to understand that I know this too. You have every right to your opinions, and you don't owe an explanation of those opinions to anybody, the least of all to me. So, why didn't the She-Hulk season finale work for me? A story is a promise. It promises the reader or the viewer a roller coaster ride of emotions. It explains exactly what the ride's going to be, and it promises not to waste anyone's time. For viewers and readers like us to engage in a story, we have to explicitly trust the promises that the stories make to us. And if the story breaks that promise to us, then we're going to naturally feel betrayed. And then we're going to put that book down or turn off that TV. Like I said before, I wasn't the biggest fan of the whole Hulk blood plot, but they were introducing it and I was curious about how they were going to handle the whole thing. And so I was willing to give them the time to see how they were going to pay it off. And with what the show had done so far and how it had subverted expectations about what you could do in a Marvel show, I thought maybe they would do the same thing with this strange subplot. But then we get to the finale and they tell us that not only are we not paying off this thing, it wasn't really important in the first place. In fact, it really had no place in the story at all. Yeah, no kidding. So then why was I so invested in this dumb subplot? Why did I care so much? Because the story told me to. I was invested in the subplot because the story had promised that if I would get invested in it, that the payoff would be worth it. And by the time we got to the end of the story, it turns out that the exact opposite was true. And it felt like the writers were just looking at us, shrugging their shoulders and going, yeah, well, it's all your fault for trusting us in the first place. 
And yes, I understand that the ending was supposed to be a meta-commentary of Marvel movies and shows and how they always seem to end up in some big fight scene and how they don't need to. But here's the problem. The show wasn't a meta-commentary on anything, much less Marvel. No, they interrupted the show with a fourth wall break and having Jennifer do a summation to basically tell the audience what the whole point of the show was. All writers know the rule. Show, don't tell. But this show, at that moment, didn't show. It told. It literally told. And I don't think I have ever seen a more egregious violation of that one rule than I did at that moment. And what makes it even worse is that I completely agree with the point they're trying to make. No, Marvel shows don't have to have big fight scenes or spectacles. They can be personal, and I think the best of the Marvel shows have that personal touch along with all the spectacle and the fights. So then why interrupt the flow of the show just to tell us this? Why not show it to us instead? Why are we having Kevin doing a deus ex machina of the ending, but then we go straight to the ending without any kind of buildup whatsoever? Why in the world do we even have to have Kevin doing that? Why can't Jen take care of that herself? This is her show. What if instead Kevin refused to change the ending because this show was his masterpiece and he meant to see it to the end the way he wanted it. But then Jen goes back and she creates herself the ending that she wants because she feels like it's better. But if Jen would have done that and we would have gotten to see that different ending, it would have proven the point they were trying to make in the show the whole time. Show. Don't tell. But I gotta tell you, of the stuff that I liked in the show and didn't like in the show, the one thing that bothered me the most about the whole thing was Josh. This guy betrayed Jen in the worst possible way you could betray anyone. And after he does it, then he just disappears. We never see him again, not even at the meeting. I mean, he's just some hired hand, some goon that was in just for a moment and then he just disappears. That's it? After all that the guy has done? And how do you not have a twist at the end where it's revealed that all that time, Josh was actually Runa, the shape-changing elf from New Asgard, back for revenge for what Jen did to her during her court trial? I mean, come on now. After all the time that Jen goofed on Dennis about falling for Runa's magical catfishing, if she had fallen for the same trick... Writers, how do you let an opportunity like that just pass you by? Okay, maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit about that last part. But come on, didn't that cross your minds at least once? Mm -hmm.